in this section i'm going to talk about uh choke flow but before i do that i'm going to we're going to derive um the mass flow for compressible flow uh through through a nozzle through a pipe um and then i'm going to talk to talk about choke flow and the implications of that so we're going to start this derivation just um quite simply so should know this from continuity the um the mass flow is equal to the density of the fluid times the cross section area times the velocity now um we should remember um from the first part of this lecture that the velocity is equal to the Mach number times the sonic velocity and also that the sonic velocity is the square square root of gamma rt where gamma and r are the um, properties related to the fluid so if we substitute um a into um, this equation and then that equation into our continuity equation. We've now got the um, uh, the mass flow as a function of rho, the area of the Mach number, and um, gamma r and t. Okay. Now we can replace um, the density of the um, fluid by remembering from my, the universal gas equation that. Um, Rho is equal to P over RT, so it's normally PV equals MRT, and then obviously um, M over V is the um, is rho. So we got this equation, so we can substitute that into um, into this mass one, so that's what we end up with. Now we've got R and T in here a couple of times, so if we now collect the terms, we can simplify that, and we've now got the mass flow as a function of the pressure uh, root over gamma rt times the C8 cross-section area times the Mach number. So just taking that to the top of the, the next slide. Now in here we've got the um, pressure and um, the temperature of the fluid but that's obviously at that particular point. Now that's not um, uh, terribly useful to us. Um, it's much better to um, express these terms in terms of the stagnation pressure and the stagnation temperature because if the fluid's at rest then we know what those values are. So by recalling um, from earlier in this lecture from the earlier video um, that the static temperature is a um, function of the the Mach number and temperature and the static pressure uh, sorry the stagnation pr pressure and stagnation temperature um, is a function of the 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 pressure and the, um, the Mach number. So we can substitute these into the um, uh, the equation we have here for the mass flow. So we can substitute in, if we um, kind of resolve for P and um, substitute that into there and make T the function here, and sorry, T the um, subject of this equation and substitute into here. Then we end up with this rather unwieldy equation here. And if you can't see how I've done this, just get a bit of scrap paper. So just made P the subject of this equation, substituted in here. T the subject of this equation, and substituted in here. And now we've ended up with this. Now, as I say, that's quite um, a unwieldy equation. So we can simplify it because we've got this kind of common term in here. We've got this 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2m squared term, you know, in here. So we can simplify this a bit further. So if we collect all the terms, then what we end up is this final um, equation here. Okay, now it looks quite complex, um, but we now we've got everything in kind of things that we can quite easily measure. So the mass flow is the area of the cross section area. We should be able to get know that um, the stagnation uh, pressure and temperature. That's fairly um, easy to easy to know, um, and then properties of the fluid, and then the um and also the the velocity of the um fluid okay which is expressed non-dimensionally as a Mach number so let's kind of look at this then so um this is our final uh, solution derivation now notice that if we increase the um stagnation pressure then the mass flow rate increases that makes sense so if we've got a um a nozzle and um is connected to a reservoir then the stagnation pressure of the reservoir is basically static pressure of the reservoir because there's no dynamic pressure there so if we start increasing the pressure of our reservoir then the mass flow increases that makes sense if we start increasing the cross-section area of our pipework then the mass flow rate goes up 
again that makes sense um, and also if we increase the um, temperature and stagnation temperature then the mass flow rate um, decreases as well and um, you know that makes sense because as we increase the temperature um, we're decreasing the density so the mass flow rate um, will go down however the relationship with um, the fluid velocity is more difficult to determine because obviously it's um, you can see it's you know wrapped up in these um, exponents and things so it's quite difficult to determine so the best way to do it is to plot it graphically so if we plot that um, the mass flow rate as a function of the Mach number with all other terms being kept constant then I've just normalized the mass flow rate here you can see um, we end up with this kind of relationship now what's interesting here is you can notice that the maximum mass flow rate occurs at mac num uh, the mach number of unity so as you start increasing the velocity of the fluid um, as it's subsonic you increase the mass flow rate mass flow rate mass flow rate but once you get to mac number one um, as you start increasing the velocity of the fluid further and start going supersonic then the mass flow rate decreases so the maximum um, uh, mass numbers occurs at um, sonic velocities and this is what's termed the choke flow so when we're talking about the um, de Laval nozzle I said that um, the flow becomes sonic at the throat and then downstream it becomes supersonic but the mass flow rate is really limited by um, the by the mass flow rate at the throat and so this is what choke flow is so the, f the flow becomes choked when the Mach number becomes sonic okay and we can determine for our system what the maximum flow rate that we can get through because if we know the maximum flow rate occurs when the flow is sonic i.e m equals one if we set it m equals one in this equation then this is what we end up with this is the maximum mass flow rate that we can have um, for this um, pressure so just notice in um, this equation i've resubstituted substituted back in um, the density rho um, so remember the rho is equal to um, pressure over rt um, so basically just you've got square root of rt here and then pressure so if you kind of you should be able to with a scrap of paper just see how i've got to this term here so again just to remind you this is um, this term here calculates maximum velocity that you can achieve um, at choke flow if in doubt just add it, put m equals one into this equation but both are valid it's the same thing okay so that was um, choke flow but um, there's what's called a, the critical pressure and um, the critical pressure is basically the pressure that occurs when choke flow um, when choke that occurs when choke flow occurs so if you remember um, from earlier we said that the stagnation pressure is um, is really is this function here now for choke conditions we know that the mass flow is equal to one sorry that the Mach number is equal to one for sonic velocity so if we set the um, Mach number equal to one in this um, uh, function here then we end up with this relationship and if we divide um, by the pressure we're going to this has now got subscript um, C for critical pressure this is the pressure just to remind you this is the pressure at which um, we have um, choke flow then you can see that this is now just purely a function of fluid properties um, you know it's just a function of gamma and for air you know we know that gamma is around 1.4 therefore if we substitute that in we get the ratio of um, our stagnation pressure to our critical pressure is um, 1.89 or 0.53 if you um, show the other way around so what this is really saying is that if if the um, the pressure at the throat falls below approximately a half of the upstream pressure then the flow will choke and we have choke flow and that's our reaches our critical pressure um, which again is quite useful in these types of calculations okay so that completes um, this lecture on compressible fluid flow if you have any comments or queries um, then please let me know thanks for listening